The pacemakers uh, increase your heart rate. So the people who need pacemakers are people whose hearts go too slowly. And sometimes people whose hearts go erratically because the pacemaker can create a regular rhythm out of an irregular rhythm. But mainly it's for people with symptoms due to the slow heartbeat or a risk that the heart might stop suddenly. And the symptoms are typically fainting or feeling weak and tired uh, because the heart's going too slowly or not speeding up enough when you exercise. Really, there's no restrictions when you have a pacemaker, uh, apart from maybe using a gun, on, uh, a rifle on the side of your pacemaker, which would be potentially damaging it. But in other respects, you should have, provided the pacemaker's been put in properly, uh, you should have full movement of all your arms and legs and no restriction in your activities. Even I have um, patients who are kickboxing uh, with a pacemaker and the pacemaker survives. So really, it shouldn't be a restriction. Um, there are some issues about interference with the pacemaker due to electromagnetic uh, radiation. So working in high intensity uh, welding places or uh, with military radar and things like that may have some restrictions and you know, powerful magnetic switchgear may interfere with pacemakers, but usually not enough to cause a problem. No, it's a fairly simple operation done under local anaesthetic largely. And uh, it does um, require a, a proper uh, type of operating theater with x-rays so you can see where the pacemaker wires are going in the heart. But uh, the actual surgery is quite straightforward. It's important that the surgeon knows about the requirement of the patient for the pacemaker to be comfortable and out of sight and uh, not put the pacemaker too close to the surface. Uh, because some people don't take the trouble to do it right, but it's very important that the, this, any patient who's having a pacemaker says, look, I want this out of the way, I don't want to be able to see it, and I only want to be able to feel it if I'm looking for it, not just because it bumps into things. So it needs, uh, it needs a bit of um, cooperation between the surgeon and the, and the patient. Well, that is one of the problems that the wire in the heart isn't uh, very firmly fixed to the inside initially. So for the first few weeks after a pacemaker, you have to avoid sudden shocks, physical shocks, which would dislodge the wires. And occasionally a wire can come loose through no fault of anybody's. It just, just lets go of the inside of the heart. And in those conditions, it's necessary to do another operation to replace the wire. But this is very rare. Um, the pacemaker itself is on the, it's under the skin, and that can move if the skin's very uh, tissues are very soft. It can move slightly, usually outwards, until it's pressing on the skin at the side of the chest. And if it does move like that, it can easily be a small operation to just move it back in to a deeper position. But in general, if the pacemaker is put in the right place in the first place, then it should stay where it's put. Well, a pacemaker doesn't prolong your life for, mo for most people because most, condition most people who need a pacemaker have what's called sinus node disease, which just means a slow heartbeat. And you don't die of that anyway, um, but it makes life a lot more comfortable. And patients who have problems like heart block, where the heart could stop, then the pacemaker will prolong that life. Um, overall, the life expectancy with a pacemaker is at least as good as it is without one and sometimes limited by some underlying problem with the heart that the pacemaker is helping to treat, uh, and that, that, that could progress. But in terms of the heart rhythm, the pacemaker will take care of that for as long as the rest of the patient stays alive. And so it doesn't really affect, so it doesn't cause any penalty in terms of mortality at all. There are very occasional complications of pacemakers that are dangerous, um, but that's extremely rare and uh, um, can be avoided just by proper follow-up and treatment.